Oh, I got it. <laughs> it's a brute. Yes, look at that. Big golden one. Right under my nose. If you've got a local freshwater creek or a dam where you love to go bass fishing and you want to boost your catch rates, you need to check this video out. I've got some tips and techniques and some details around skip casting that's going to take your fishing to a whole new place. It's crazy heart pumping stuff. Take a look at some of this action. Oh, you no! Oh, again, again, take it again, got it. Yes! Come and get it. Yeah, got it. Yes, he was there. I saw him the first time. Yep. Oh. Fish. Oh. Done that. He's so deep in there. Yep. Oh, that's oh, that's a good fish. Man. So the spots where this is the most effective are sections where you've got big, dense, overhanging cover, or lots of timber laydowns or carnage that you just can't get other lures into. And that's where a lot of the bass are living anyway. So getting a lure in there puts you at a huge advantage because those fish don't tend to see the lure traffic and the way they behave is a whole lot more aggressive and it makes for a lot of fun. So the setup that I like to use, I'm just running with like an eight pound uh, braid and then 10 pound leader. And it's a mono leader at the moment because I'm fishing one of these little Z-Man finesse frogs rigged on a little finesse EWG weedless uh, hook. And I just pin a little bit of plastic underneath it there just to hold the little frog in the right place. And if you haven't seen the details on how I've rigged these, I've got other videos that I'll link at the, uh, in the description and at the end of the video that you can check out for some more details on how to get the most out of these things. But essentially, if you're using soft plastic lures on a little weedless hook and light line, you can skip cast these little lures deep into the cover. And the way that I like to do it, I use like, this is a seven foot rod. It's a Dobbins Fury Series 703 SF. And just a little one and a half to two and a half thousand size reel is all that you need. And you're just firing little casts in along the surface and the, the plastic will skip deep into the cover. You kind of want to, your action is to kind of overshoot your cast a little bit. And because you're running weedless hooks, you're not getting caught up anywhere near as often. So, that's the way that I run. I'll go all the way up along a bank and just fire these casts in. And if you haven't done any skip casting before, then it's something that you really want to practice and get down because it is just insane. This is what it's all about. What you're trying to do is you have about a, maybe a foot of line out off the end of your rod tip and you're trying to get your rod tip to just shoot straight across the surface maybe like five, 10 centimeters above the surface. And then you just let that lure go and off she flies along the surface of the water. It takes a little bit of practice to get it going, but once you dial it in, and I, I find that a technique where I lift the rod up to get rid of some of that slack line as it heads in there, allows you to be well connected once it stops. 
But once you get it going, you can get into the most crazy places where bass don't see lures. And it doesn't have to be a surface lure, but I think probably the best I've found at the moment for these bass are these little Z-Man finesse frogs. And uh, one of the big reasons is because they're so soft, they collapse really well onto a hook. And so that exposes your little hook there. That little hook point gets exposed really easy. And they're also a floating plastic. So at rest with a tiny little finesse hook and you wanna find the finesse gauge hooks, at rest with mono leader, they float and they sit on the surface. So it makes them good for skipping and good for stalling or fishing on the surface. There's not a lot of lures that do that. And that's one of the big appeals for me. So what you're focusing on, like I said, is anywhere, you're basically trying to lose your lure into structure or to a fish. So you're trying to just pump it as deep as you possibly can into cover or along the edge of a bank. And the retrieve, for me at this time of year, post summer, so coming out of summer, the water's still warm, the mornings are cooler, but the water's still warm, the bass are still really aggressive on the surface. And it's just a fairly slow retrieve. And if you're using a finesse frog, you listen for the speed that you want to be running at. So you'll hear the little legs. When they get going, you'll hear the sound and that's the sound that gets the bass fired up. So that's what you're trying to achieve. And there's a little bubble trail that comes out the back. You might be able to see that. As, this, as the legs get going, there's a little sound and a little bubble trail and the bass will tune right into that and they'll come flying out from under the cover and come and grab it. So it's really just like a fairly slow, slow medium burn um, or just roll back to the boat. You're not trying to get it out of there too quick, but you're also just not stalling and stopping and leaving it there for the most part. These frogs are best retrieved consistently and slow. And uh, I find that sometimes, you know, with, with surface fishing for bass, a lot of the time it's about the pause, but with these little frogs, they love that consistent roll back to the boat. So sections like this, you can see that overhanging tree there. You want to fly that thing in as hard and deep as you can get it. And the further you go, the better your shot is at getting a bass. And often, you'll hear the bass slap your lure and you can't even see where the lure's at because it's so deep in undercover. That's what you're trying to find. So sections like this where you've got big shadows or over here, let's go over here and have a go here. Sections where you've got huge overhanging trees there's insects and little bugs and things like little frogs and lizards and skinks and stuff that live in here that fall into the water all day long. Cicadas. These places are just super native to a surface lure. And the bass just line up to grab them. They're very aggressive because they've got to compete with each other for food, especially where it's really dense like this. So that's what you're trying to achieve. The skip casting, it's something that, yeah, like I said, you've got to practice. And when you're bringing your line back in, you're just pointing your rod tip at the line, at the lure, and it's a straight retrieve with it. The, the lure, you're trying to get the, the nose of it just elevated a little bit. So you might have it slightly above there like that. So you're just pulling the frog back up. So it's a lot like skimming a rock when you're a kid and you start getting a feel for skimming a rock and you, you sort of got a little bit more patience as a kid to try and learn that. It's the same patience you need to learn a skip cast, but my God, is it worth it. So you can do this with a bait casting outfit and I might show you that in a little bit if I swap over to a shad style lure, but with tiny little plastics, if you're just starting, just use a spinning outfit and you want a sort of like a seven foot rod and if you can get a rod that's kind of just a medium blank, like not a heavy, really rigid blank, it allows the bend in the rod to load the flinging skip style up to get you deep into cover. and. Uh, if you're overshooting, that's better than, than not getting into the edge. If you're going up on the bank, most of the time you can just retrieve the lure down off the bank. It's a very natural presentation, but you're not getting snagged up. So if you look at my rod speed, it's really quick flicking it in there. 
and that's what gives you the, the momentum to be able to get that lure to keep hurling across the surface into the bank. If you're in a kayak, it's even better because you're lower. Um, but you know, standing up in a boat and being elevated, you can kind of either underhanded or forehand cast it like that. But you paint, you're trying to get the, the rod tip just to fire across the surface before you release it late. And it is, it's just a feel thing. This system is fantastic for it. And as the tide drops, you can start to see the bottom of these undercut banks starting to appear. The bass live in there. And when I can get my lure deep in under that undercut bank, that's, that's when it really fires. And it, it feels like almost every cast you're in with a shot. Race out from underneath all of that junk in there and come and smash it. Oh, he put up a decent fight. It's so good to get back into my bass fishing. Especially when it's surface levels, these little frogs. Take a look at that. Oh, aren't they just gorgeous? Beautiful Australian bass. They smash it with such conviction, it's so exciting. And skipping these little lures in is, uh, is just the best way to get after them, I reckon, early morning. Oh. plastic lures they're just so convinced that it's what they're after that it's the real deal that they'll come back three four five times they don't care oh snubby nose little thing it is god they are just stunning look at that aren't they just amazing these things and they're so aggressive i love this style of fishing deep in there. I might lose this fish because it's I've only got really light later on. Oh he's just running me around all of this junk in here I can see him. Come out mate, come out. Yes. Oh God. Yes. Look at that. love this it's so good to get back into some Australian bass fishing they've just got so much to offer they challenge your casting they love living in those dark hidey holes they're just so aggressive they smash you know they smash a huge range of lures and uh, they love top water and they love these skip plastics in undercover and they put up an amazing fight too for their size god they're an impressive fish 
Look at that. Oh, got it. <laughs> the bird. Yes, look at that. Big golden one. Right under my nose. Oh, the colours on this thing. It's beautiful. Green and gold, baby. Feel my chuffed up leader, eh? That I'm holding, trying to thumb this fish. Definitely time to replace it. Come here, mate. Come here, just open your goggles and get a grip on you. Take a look at this beauty. Oh, look at that. Taken right under my nose on a skip little Z-Man frog. One of these finesse frogs. Oh yeah, look at that. In heavy cover, that's the advantage you're at with these skipping weedless lures. You can throw it into anything. And you're a shot, and they're so aggressive because they don't see that lure traffic all the time. They're in a spot where they never get to see lures. They're tied in against this cover. You can't get a conventional diving lure or something in there with trebles or an open hook down in there. It's such exciting fishing. I've got to change this leader. I'm holding that bass and I can feel the fish I've caught deep in cover has just rasped up this, this mono leader. I'll change it and I'll get back into it. Oh yeah, here it comes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <gasps> Scared a big bass sitting on that brush pile. Here we go, come on. Come and get it. Yeah, got it! Yes! He was there, I saw him the first time. And he had a look at it, and then uh, he didn't commit, but I'm down in, in uh, structure, I got him out now. You beauty. God, that is fun. Throwing these things deep into cover, these finesse frogs, they are just something else to fish with.
Right, well the bite's pretty much slowed up now for the surface fishing action that I had with this little Z-Man's finesse frogs. The sun's pretty much overhead and so the shadows have really receded back away from the banks. There's still a couple of pockets that I'd, I'd like to hit and uh, what I'm going to do is I just tend to change up, just switch up and use something like this little three and a half inch Molex RT Shad. They're fairly new. Same as these little three inch, these GT, uh, 360 GT Coastal Storm plastics, little paddle tails like that. Something like that with the, the shape of a little shad or a herring or a mullet is just gonna skip a lot better for you than like a little trick swims or a little worm pattern. So that's what I like to use once the sun's overhead and you can still extend your session, get plenty of bites that way. So um, that's the way that I'll tend to go once the, the, the sort of bite slows from the surface or if I get a couple of swirls or bass just not committing and I see flashes of bass and they're not quite getting through the surface anymore, that's what I'll do. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you do that. I've got heaps of good stuff coming in the next couple of weeks. And if you've got any questions on skip casting or chasing bass or different techniques that you'd like uh, my input with, make sure you put a comment in the section below and I'll get back to you. I'll see you in the next video.